Hello everyone, welcome to today's training video and today we're going to be talking about creating a custom project detail page with Microsoft Project Online. Uh, my name is Daniel Bell, I am going to be your instructor today and it's a pleasure to be with you. Regarding the uh, procedure for creating this uh, project detail page, and we're going to go through a few steps and it's going to be relatively uh, quick here. First, we're going to review what a project detail page is for those of you who don't really know exactly what they are and how they're used. Um, then we're going to go ahead and uh, create a new project detail page, add fields to it. Um, once that uh, the page is created, the fields have been added to it, we're going to replace our old project detail page with a new one. And then we're going to demonstrate uh, exactly how that new page functions within the tool. All right, so let's get started. Uh, this is a the, the training environment we're going to use. What I'd like to do is show you what the detail page looks like now. I'm going to navigate to Project Center and I'm going to open a project. There's my, yeah, just a one project in here. It's a little training environment that I have. And uh, when I click on the project, it, the tool brings me into more detailed information about the project. And uh, look at these two items up here in the top left. One's called schedule, this link at the top, and then the link right underneath that is called project detail page, uh, project detail, excuse me. Each one of those is a project detail page. Okay, uh, the, the project detail page called schedule, if I click on that, that is going to provide us the ability to look at the project schedule. And as you're aware, there are multiple views available out of the box for which we can view these project schedules, assignments based, resource based, task based. The other project detail page is called project details. And on this particular page, we get to see all the, uh, the fields that are in the system, the project attributes, right? We're going to see, first of all, the intrinsic out of the box fields, such as name, product ID, description, start date. Uh, but we'll also see in this particular one, all the custom fields we create. Therefore, if we create custom fields that will track, Hey, what's the expected benefit of this project? We want to know why we're going to do it or where is it uh, being executed, Arlington, Virginia? What is the problem statement? What problem is this project gonna solve if it's executed, right? So these project detail pages will show your intrinsic fields, product attributes, as well as the custom project attributes. So the question comes, well, hey, why do I want to create a new product detail page? Well, you're looking right at it. By default, your uh, default project details page called project details will automatically, as you create custom fields in the system, it will automatically add those custom fields right to the page. So you don't have to do anything. Okay. But if you notice what it does is it just adds them under this section here called details, right? It's going to add them in any particular order. Okay. So we have uh, a couple of milestone items here. We have Expected benefit, problem statement, location, program, cost of permits, health, right? So there's really no logic to the order in which they're laid out. Also, you, you, you might want to change the order. You might want to put them into columns. You might want to actually break these out into a couple of different pages. Because if you look, I have, um, I have a status update. Right? So this is really meant to be filled out by the project manager every reporting period. Hey, here's why my project is tracking this way, this reporting period. And therefore... Those are primarily the reasons that you'd want to have a custom PDP is because you don't particularly like the way the fields are displayed by default in Product Online. You want them to display in a particular order on particular pages so that your users can get used to the way they look, right? Now, just a quick example. What I want to do is I want to create a custom PDP. I'm going to call it business case and it's going to have two columns and I'm going to go ahead and spread my custom fields out on two separate columns, as you can see here. Okay, so we'll put some on the left side, some on the right side, and, and we'll call a business case, and that's gonna logically break it out so that people who interact with this will know, hey, that business case PDP, uh, that, that's going to capture, you know, basically the information we used to track on a paper project chart, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, another project detail page, and I'm gonna call it project status. It's gonna look something like this, uh, but not exactly because I don't have all these fields. Uh, but the, the purpose of the project status field is, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, is that project manager has to create a status report every reporting period. You know, we have this 
um, product status description we'd like them to fill out every reporting period because this is going to be automatically pulled into their status report. We also need them to be able to verify um, KPIs that we have. We have a schedule, we have a cost, and also have overall health KPIs, right? So in this particular case, they manually set. Therefore, the PM would have to manually set them. If they were automatically, we'd still want them to be on this PDP. So the project manager could you know, review them and confirm that they're the way we want them to be. All right. So that's basically what we're going to try to accomplish here. Let's get started. So we're going to close out of here. And first thing I'm going to do is navigate to server settings. And when I do that, it, it, the tool brings me to the PWA settings. This is where we have access to all the different areas of the tool set from which we can configure it. Where we're going to be spending our time is in workflow and project detail pages down here. Specifically, I'm going to click on this link called project detail pages. And you'll note that currently we have these five pages, right? Now, if you recall, we had the schedule page we were looking at that earlier. Out of the box. This is the page that will display to us the project schedule. Strategic impact, that's out of the box again. And this is the page that if we were using the pro portfolio analysis features, uh, we'd be able to select the uh, appropriate setting for each um, quantification or the impact statement. Workflow status, that shows the status of the workflow if we're using uh, project line workflow. And then we have a couple others here. The project details is the one we were looking at that dynamically displays our uh, custom fields. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create new. We'll select new and we'll click on project detail page. And here's where we have to specify a name, right? So remember, I said I wanted to call it the business case. What I'm going to do is uh, let's look at this. Which one are we going to actually choose here? I guess to do uh, three columns here. I might end up doing, uh, let's see, can we do two columns? Yeah, let's try to let's try to three and see what that looks like. Go ahead and click a create, and there is our page with the columns here that we wanted. Now we're not going to necessarily use all these. You could really, if, if you wanted to have an image up top and you know, some kind of regular footer at the bottom, you can certainly all use these different areas, quadrants. But uh, we're not going to in this demonstration. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, add a web part. So I'll click on that link that says add a web part. When I do that, I get the uh, select a web part feature comes up. First, I have to select the appropriate category. This is something related to Project Web App. That's what I want. I'm going to select that. And then here I have to pick the ones that's going to go ahead and allow me to select the item that's going to allow me to put project fields on them. You'll notice the basic info when I click on that. It says display a list uh, that may consist of project custom fields, summary fields, uh, inherent fields, uh, etc. We'll go ahead and add that. And it looks like it's displayed there. And there's basic info. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add the web part to the right column as well. Basic info, click add. And ultimately what we're going to have is we're going to have the two web parts here, basic info one and two. Let's go ahead and start with number one. We'll click on that. So again, what did I do? You'll notice that um, when you hover over the web part here, you'll have this tiny little arrow. You can click on that. When you do it, it exposes a sub menu, click on edit web part. And when that comes up, that will uh, display the menu uh, functionality or the capabilities we're able to perform on this web part along the uh, right side of the screen. This first section says displayed web uh, project fields. These are the fields that are currently displayed on, on this particular web part. There are currently none. What we want to do is we want to display the sum here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to click modify. And when that comes up, we'll notice that on the left we have all the available project fields we can add here. And then on the right we have the current fields on the web part, which are none. So what we're going to do is start adding the fields we want here. The first is going to be project ID. Second is going to be name. Second is going to be description. That's so going to be up here a little. Actually, description is called description. Let's see. Uh, we're going to add project department there. We'll have proposed start and finish. So let's go ahead and find those. Let's see, proposed start, proposed finish. Then we add program and that will be it for that web part right there. Now what I can do is click apply in the bottom 
And when I do that, I should see the page refresh and then the web uh, fields will be added to the web part like so. All right, so now you can see that one's complete. What I want to do is actually give this uh, an in a little name here. We'll call this, let's call it business case. And this is just going to rename that section right there that says basic info one. I'm going to click apply again. Now we can see it's called business case. Great. That one's done. Let's click OK. And now let's make modifications to the second web part over here on the right. Find that little arrow. Click on edit web part. That'll bring up that menu along the right like we saw before. Okay, we're going to just change that name. And then like we did before, we'll click modify. This will bring up that choose project fields dialog like we had before. What we want is problem statement. We want expected benefit. We want proposed cost. Let's bring that over here. And I think we're going to have proposed benefits right under that. And then we want ROI. And there's that. We want proposed go live. Let's find that. And uh, lastly, we're going to add project health. There we go. Click OK. Let's click apply and see how it looks. There we go. So there is our second web part on the right side with the fields that we wanted to add in the order that we wanted. And again, we wanted the, the two columns because in this particular case, we didn't want to have to have the users scroll up and down to fill out all the fields. We wanted them to be able to go from left to right and fill out the fields. All right, we'll click OK. And that takes care of that particular web part, the project detail page. Therefore, I can click Stop Editing here. There is one thing I need to make sure. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to click edit properties while I'm still on the page. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to make sure that I have the correct page type here. Page type is project. So page type of one project will allow me to use this particular project detail page as a page to view project information. There's another project type here. You see new project. If we were going to use it to initiate projects, we would select that. And then the third option is workflow status. Okay. That is it for that page. Let's go ahead and click our next one. And this one we're going to call project status. ATUS, like so. We're going to do full page vertical. Keep this one simple. There it is, just that one area in which we can add web parts. We click on add a web part. We find project web app in the categories and in the parts. We're going to select basic info like we did before. Click add. And then there's our web part. Find that little arrow in the right sub menu. Click edit web part. And uh, we'll call this project status for the title. And then we're going to click modify. OK, so I'm going to want project name here. Right there. And then we're going to want project status. And then we're going to want project health. So we're going to add a number of fields here in the very beginning. Project health. Okay, great. Now those are the, the few that we want at the very top. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Okay. So that, that will go ahead and put those right there. So if we wanted to actually break out the second section, so let's say for instance, we had schedule details and cost details and we wanted each to have their separate heading like so we would add separate web parts and then separately add the fields to those web parts. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add them to this one web part and keep things a little simple here. What I would like is proposed go live right there. And then I would like finish date. And then we're going to put project schedule. So those are our project schedule data points. Then we want to have our cost information. We're going to put the cost here. Okay. 
And then we'll also put the cost variance. And then lastly, we're going to put project cost here as well. Click OK. Click Apply. We should see those other fields added here. OK, great. Oh, one more field we need to add here. And it is going to be that field we saw earlier. Project, start, finish, remaining, project status summary. And it looks like, let's back up just for one minute here. Let's click OK. Status update. Okay, so in the one other field we want to add here called status update. It's going to be a multi-line text field. We'll click OK. Click apply. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move that field up. And we'll go ahead and select that. And notice you can select it and then there's an up and down button here. What I'd like to do Let's put it right under the status field. Then I'm going to click OK, and that's going to wrap up this particular page. Status name, project status, which is what are we in initiate, execute, control, close. There's the update. Why are we tracking the way we are? Manually set health, schedule, cost, KPIs. And then we have some data points behind those um, schedule and cost KPIs to understand why they're the way they are. Let's go back here. We're all done. Let's click Stop Editing. Now what we need to do is go ahead and replace the current pages with those new pages. Now where do we do that? Well, enterprise project types are what pull these various components together. And what we want to do is modify the enterprise project project type. And there's a lot of settings in here. And what we'll do is we'll go over these settings in another video. So, so be sure to check out a different video at another time. So um, what we're going to do is this. Remember, we wanted to get rid of project details because that's the dynamic one. So again, this is in the new project page, project details section of this. Here's the available PDP pages sections, and here are the, currently the PDPs that are part of this. We want to remove that dynamic one. We're going to add business case. We're going to add project status. And what I'm going to do is put business case above schedule. Just like that, business case, schedule, status. That's the way the PDP should appear. We'll save. And let's go back to Project Center. There's our one project. Go ahead and click on that. Hey, look at that. Business case, schedule, project status, exactly the order we wanted them in. And there are our project attributes. Remember what we did? We called one business case. We called the other project details. Here are the fields in the order we wanted. ID, name, description, department, proposed start, finish, program. On the other side, we had problem statement, expected benefit, proposal cost, benefits, ROI, go live, and health. That was our business case page that we defined and we created that project status page. Let's take a look at that. And there it is, exactly the way we wanted. Name, what status are we in? We're in initiation. We're not quite executing. What's the status update? Okay, so that's what we would update as the project manager of a reporting period. Health is currently doing well. Schedule is doing well. Uh, cost is doing well. Of course, we're not executing yet, so uh, we're going to be in a good state since your baseline is going to match your whatever um, actuals you may have if you have any at this point in time. Okay, great. Well, that concludes today. If you have any questions, comments, uh, you'd like any assistance or additional training, feel free to reach out. Our contact information is right there on this current slide. Pleasure being with you today. Have a wonderful day. Thank you again.